So I'm here with Jeremy Hess of Vegan Interactions at the UK Veg Fest 2018. We only met yesterday, of course, and I really want you to check out his website, doing some amazing stuff. How's, how are you finding the event? It's a, a fantastic event. I think uh, it's a great way that it just pulls around 15,000 vegans together for a weekend just to celebrate veganism together and share new ideas and I think realize that we're not alone. Absolutely. I yeah. think that is one sure thing. And now the, the movement's growing, of course. Now, um, tell everybody what Vegan Interactions is because I'm really excited about what you're doing. I think the thing that really excites me about Vegan Interactions is beginning of last year I read a book and I think what really draws me to Claire's work is I think psychology has a lot to offer the movement. Mm -hmm. I think we were just discussing earlier that I think if we could empower the vegan community with basic communication skills and you can spend your whole life studying these things and but you don't have to. You can start you know, with the basic skills and just having that basic safety net. So really my vision with Vegan Interactions is, is to deliver some of those skills that I know have helped me you know, I, I've been um, really studying the theory, and since then, I've had over a thousand interactions with the public, and really trying to apply and constantly reevaluate what works the best way, and really what works for me, and you know, providing that in a digestible format through a discussion guide and through some short videos, and also street interviews, so people can see, you know, what may work for them. And we're all different people and communicate in different ways, and it's a matter of just kind of taking those bits that you think work and finding what works for you. And of course, a lot of people, you know, when I can know some of the people watching this, no doubt, they're going to say, well, it's very different if you're in a cube of truth, which both of us are involved in, than if you're actually talking to your family. How do you see that? And uh, what are any, from the top of your list sort of thing, what's different for people when they're talking to mum or they're talking to a member of the public? I think, for me, um, communicating with loved ones is very similar. I just think we have to be more keen on the similar principles, for instance, being patient and not having that single interaction focus, which is which is tough when we're invested with our family members. So I think those those same communication skills exist. Yes. They just are on a much heightened level um, that we just have to be aware of. Yeah, That's absolutely. been my experience. And, you know, we have, we've probably one of the um, most influenced with our family members. So even though it seems like maybe sometimes we can't influence them, I think we can and we just have to look for those opportunities where they're, where they're open to the discussion. So what would your top two tips be? If there's people out there that are struggling to get people in engage with them and share what's important to them, what are your top two tips that they could apply right away and actually have a different interaction? I think for me probably the first thing would be not having a single interaction focus, so not trying to veganize the person on the spot. I know for me I used to put the pressure on myself that I have to collect all these stats and figures and make sure I say the exact right thing, you know, because of what's on the line, you know, non-human animals and um, I think for me just re relieving that was a huge weight off my shoulders yes. and I think for a second tip I would just say be genuine and be yourself and talk about your own personal experiences instead of talking about what other people should be doing talk about how you feel and what you experienced and I was shocked to learn X Y and Z yeah. and I find the word we is very powerful you yeah know, we have all been duped you know there was a time when I felt that and I can't believe how much we've been lied to it it's so inclusive isn't it as opposed to you know I'm all saved and and organized and, and you're sort of still in the dark right so what would you say your top two tips are? Well, I think it is, that's one of them, certainly, is to use uh -huh. the word we. Um, I'm all about getting people to lean forward. So uh -huh. it's very much asking people questions. Mm -hmm. And actually, if somebody says to you, no, so why are you vegan? We've got a tendency to sort of answer that, haven't we? And we have this whole story. And if you turn around and actually say, okay, I can answer it. There's many ways to actually answer that. Um, what do you know about veganism? Okay, so you know whether that person's a doctor and they're coming from a background of knowledge or resistance potentially or right. in fact they um, genuinely don't know anything we can position our message so get to know the audience would be something a really big one yeah and I think that's certainly what I found is I go into every interaction like I have something to learn and ask them questions and get them thinking because I find if I can do that they're much more engaged in the conversation oftentimes I'll give someone my card and say thanks for stopping and we'll talk for another five or ten minutes yes. because they're they're truly engaged so there was somebody asked me a question at the end of the some of the talks we gave yesterday and said you know what do I do when someone says, but I really like the taste of, you know, um, the food I eat at the moment. Yeah. And I said, agree with them. Do you know you're absolutely right? Like you, I enjoy yeah. tasty food, don't we all? 
course, and it actually takes all that sort of pressure when we, they don't expect us to agree, do they? Right. And, and yet, I sort of learned, you know, some of the things that go into that. How much do you know about where your food comes from? Right. You know, and it's that gentle way. But if we immediately say, it's not about you, you know, what about the animals? They're talking about taste, and we're talking about ethics. We're not even on the same page. Right. Yeah, I, I think that's a fantastic point. It's just the flow of communication. Um, I think oftentimes people say things that just make us want to tense up and resist them. And if we can say, actually, you know, you, if it applies to you, you can say, you know, I used to feel the same way. Or even if it doesn't apply to you, say, oh, I think a lot of people feel that way. And then you can start building, you know, the vegan case um, from that. Definitely. And you know, it's, it's interesting. If, if you lose your cool, I think it's very important to actually admit to that. And if you sort of attack someone, is actually say, whoa, hands up. I really apologize for yelling at you and, and getting upset with you. And yet, I'm not going to apologize for the strength with which I feel the problem going on. Yeah. We need to be angry about that. You separate it from blaming the person to being angry about the, the cruelty that's going on, for instance. Right, the act versus the person. I guess that's the difference between guilt and shame, isn't it? The, ah. Can you so, explain that? What do you mean by that? Yeah, so I guess guilt is um, over an action, where shame is feeling bad as a person. Mm -hmm. And um, one of the things I'm going to be talking about in my talk later is um, the shame response. And, you know, we're all responsible for our own feelings. And I think there are ways that we can help manage triggering those responses in others. And that's that's probably one of the key things I've also incorporated in my own outreach is, and I think it's a lot of what you're saying, having those positive messages. Because for me, it really boils down to positive reinforcement. And when people are starting um, to look at um, going vegan, discussing those potential barriers and helping them overcome them. Yeah. It was a question I or a comment I heard in a talk yesterday, which was, what do you do when someone says, well, you know, why are you so worried about animals? There's all these human problems and the person said something that really got me thinking he said that person has just discovered moral guilt at some level they're starting to feel that there's something to be concerned about like people but what they want to do is potentially make you feel more guilty by saying your judgment and what you're focusing on and it's a very different way of um, yeah. opening up isn't it is they have been agitated in some way as opposed to comparing the validity of what you should focus on is then actually you know asking them questions of course yeah. oh I think that's probably one of the most challenging things as an animal advocate is we're constantly dealing with these deflections. You know, why don't you care about human animals? You know, um, what about this and that? And I think, yeah, I think veganism and, and, and human rights are one and the same. And I think the more we can come to realize that, we can be more inclusive and draw more people in. I think, you, you know, a lovely comment I heard from um, Brian Hel Helmond, I think his name is, a colleague of mine in, in Sydney, is when people say, but aren't you so, why are you so concerned about animals? I'm concerned about animals for the same reason I'm concerned about people, <laughs> you know, in, in the inclusive like that. Is it, do you know, we have a certain amount of compassion. No, our hearts get bigger when we actually open them up. Right. So, which is good. But now, look, I've shared with you the whole concept of dystopia. I think you kind of know what it is, of course. Yeah. Um, the, the anguish and uh -huh. people's reactions and then this bigger picture. What do you think about it as a sort of um, thing for the vegans? Is this going to help our movement? Absolutely. I think what for me, um, I've learned over the last couple of years, one of the biggest things is self-care and I think the first step for self-care is self-awareness so I think acknowledging that we when you when you uh, are woken up to um, this pre-vegan world and all that goes on in it it's terrifying and I think figuring out ways to manage that I think we're all going through similar things and it can feel like you're all alone but by putting a name to it it's it's really kind of giving something that we can talk about and I think we all have trauma in our lives and this is one form of trauma um, and I think it's it's just I think it just focuses a response to it. Yeah. What set of solutions and things like that? Yeah. Yeah. It's, sorry, if you ask question. I was just gonna say. So what's you know I I I would say we probably both suffer from dystopia in, in different ways. <laughs> That's right. So what what would you say your key tricks are in your own life to kind of responding to dystopia? Two things is exquisite self awareness, which then moves into self care uh -huh. because you can only be to help take people on a journey when you're prepared to go it yourself to uh -huh. try transition through this and linguistic um, mastery is when we are if you come away from every conversation knowing you have nudged people in the right direction yeah. you can live with that you can feel happy about that that's your point um, 
but it starts with self-awareness. You know, um, we can't when we're angry at the world and we're in high levels of distress, we can't be an instrument of change. And I think also we can't help the animals, and they need us to be an even bigger voice for them. Oh, I think an instrument of change is a great way to put it. I think uh, when I do outreach, I just get such a buzz. Um, when I had that powerful conversation, you know, just the other week, I was speaking with someone, and they didn't say a whole lot. I just kind of asked some questions, and they gave fairly short answers. And in the end, their eyes were a bit watery, and they said, you know, and when I asked them at one point what, what they um, thought about everything, and the response was, "Well, I feel bad about you know eating chickens," and you could tell it was just starting to click. And I think when you have these positive of interactions and you know you can do it um, yeah. consistently, all of a sudden having the conversations is exciting, not a drain. Yeah, no, fantastic. Great. Well, um, this is my new best friend, the UK <laughs> Veg Fest. And anything else you want to say to people? Um, I would just say that I think for me, my animal advocacy is probably the best part of who I am. So I would just encourage you to get out there and experiment and try different things because I think you'll find uh, that the same could be true for you. <laughs> just some basic communication communication skills yeah. and you know study um, Claire's got a great website a great app with um, a basic daily routine that you can kind of get um, little nuggets to get you on your way check out the discussion guide on my website and just get out there and get started Absolutely, and learn to collaborate I mean we're both working in the same area is learn you know this strength if we want to go fast we go on our own if you want to go far you collaborate with other people and and we've got this superordinate goal haven't we um, and I think this is a great thing for the vegan movement there, there doesn't need to be and there shouldn't be any competition Keeping each other at high levels is one thing, but not actually. There's, you know, we've got 7.6 billion people to work with, and we we all need all hands to the deck, don't we? That that's <laughs> a great point. Tom Reagan has a great point just around that. That if you put sunlight into a room, you warm it up. If you put that same sunlight through a magnifying glass, you can start a fire. Oh, so nice. that that is Very is nice. where I think it's really important, and that yeah. speaks to that collaboration. Because I think the animal rights movement at the moment, we're getting some warmth through the, the window, and if we can find ways to work together and, and stop bashing heads so, head so much on the theory of it, and actually I think when we get down to the nuts and bolts of it, the practical application, there's not a whole lot of difference in approaches. So. I think you're right, and I wholeheartedly agree, is get out there and step up your activism. Um, in fact, I'm, ultimately people say to me, how do you overcome dystopia? Because it's, it's, we live in this pre-vegan world, as you've said, transmuting that into powerful action for change, being part of the solution, is really the only way I've ever found for people to work through truly through this and not be overwhelmed with it. Yeah, helping others is probably the best form of self-care, isn't it? Absolutely. So thank you. Oh, thank you so yeah. much. Yeah. This is great. Thank you, Claire. I mean, thank I really you for everything you're doing, too. Thank you. Cheers. Yeah, I was really inspired. Uh, uh, uh. <laughs> I'll, I'll, just, I'll just do it again. Uh, anything else you want to say to people? Um, <sighs> I'll, I'll have to edit out this pause. <laughs> yeah, that's right. <laughs> oh, that was really good. Yeah, that was really fun.